Up until 18, I've lived my whole life in one place, Hong Kong. But in the summer of 2019, when I was 18 years old, I moved halfway across the globe to the UK. And I never would have expected how much it would change my life. My name's Jason. I'm a law school graduate turned management consultant. I moved to the UK from Hong Kong when I was 18 and at 21, I moved to London. I hope this video will give you the push to pursue an exciting and unique life for yourself. And I also hope that it can inspire you to take some actions that you were really afraid of. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So I grew up in Hong Kong in a very safe and loving environment. My family were very loving, very complete. I live with my parents, but we also live very close by to our grandparents. I had very similar friends with similar backgrounds growing up. Everyone had similar interests. Everyone was from the similar socioeconomic class. Everything was just very stable and very predictable. Culturally, I grew up watching both stuff from Hong Kong and also stuff from the West. I grew up watching Disney Channel, Hong Kong TV shows, as well as Japanese animes like Pokemon, Naruto. I play football. I love watching football. And that was how I was growing up. And I never thought that I would one day leave this place that that I call home. I was always the good kid growing up. Teachers really liked me because I'm always like the well-behaved guy. But on the other side of the coin, that meant that I never really questioned the way of life. I never really questioned why certain thing is. And I certainly did not expect or understood that I was in this giant bubble. But my life all changed when I turned 18. So at 18, we had to decide on this scary thing called university. I never gave much thought to my future up until that point. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what university I wanted to go to. I didn't even know where I wanted to do university. But at 18, we were forced to make that decision. I mean, whose idea was that? That it's a good idea to let a bunch of 18 year old kids to decide what they want to study, which usually meant what they will do for the rest of their lives in the future. When most of these kids haven't even had a proper relationship or worked in a job of any kind. When I was forced to make that decision, the thought of going abroad for university was very mysterious but also very exciting and partly because my parents has always wanted me to go to a university in the UK that's why I ended up doing but other than the feeling of mysterious and excitement I had no conception of what this meant I had no concept of what it meant to be going abroad living in a new country living in a new culture living by myself doing everything so differently from what I'm used to for the last 18 years but I just had that urge to go out there to explore the world and to conquer it and so I did so to apply for university you have to write this thing called personal statement which tells about why you want to apply for different subjects now here's where the problem comes I don't actually know what I wanted to study so what ended up happening was that I wrote three different personal statements for three different subjects I wrote one for journalism one for international relation and a week before the deadline of uni application I wrote another one for law and that's what I ended up doing how predictable Asian students with good grades going into law Wow. My life started to turn around that summer when I landed in the UK. New country, new people, new school, new supermarkets. Living on my own for the first time, doing my laundry on my own for the first time, learning how to cook for the first time. Yeah, at 18, I was finally forced to learn how to cook because no one's ever going to cook for me again. I survived on tomato sauce pasta for the whole first year and it was not ideal thinking back. It just makes me want to form it, but at least it was a start. And that year was also a year that I realized that thing that looked like microwave back home was not actually a microwave. It was a mini oven because my mom really hated microwaves for certain reasons. So we, instead of a microwave, we have like a mini microwave looking oven. And guess what? You put food in the microwave a lot shorter than you would in an oven. I still remember the facial expression of my flatmate from Cambridge when he saw the grilled cheese sandwich I put in the microwave for three minutes and how he looked at me when I tried to eat it, when it was rock hard. I struggled a lot, I learned a lot through trial and error. But what I learned really is that when you're put on a spot, when you're forced to do something, you can learn at a speed that you never knew you could before. But learning all these external things was not really the biggest struggle. I can just learn them online, I can Google them, I can YouTube them. But the biggest struggle actually came inside of me. I miss home, I miss the friendship group I had back home which I stuck with for like six years. I miss being in a comfortable and familiar environment. I didn't feel at home when I was in the UK. I was the only Asian student in my flat. I was the only Asian player in my football team in uni. Yes, I did speak the language, but I didn't speak the culture. It was funny because before I actually went to the UK, I thought I would thrive there just like I did in Hong Kong. But what I didn't realize was how good I had it back home, how good my life setup was, how 
amazing often support network I had how the familiarity of the community and culture really helped me thrive a lot back home when I was in Hong Kong and I did not have that at all in the UK I was now the outsider trying to assimilate into their culture some nights I really hated how different everyone was and some other nights I just really hated myself for being so different it took me a long time to adjust my expectations and my mindset but I eventually did especially during first year and second year of uni it was uh, the peak of covid and i did a lot of late night journaling a lot of just late night thinking i realized that i shouldn't be looking at these obstacles as obstacles instead i should be seeing them as like opportunity for me to grow outside of my comfort zone the rome emperor marcus aurelius puts is the best the impediment to action advances action what stands in the way becomes the way I forced myself to go out and attend a lot of different events, met a lot of different interesting people and eventually I found my footing and found a community of people that really cared about me. Because of just forcing myself to go out there and do things that sometimes I just didn't feel like doing. I had the chance to go on so many different interesting experiences and memories that I will treasure forever. Playing football and going to the pub afterwards with my team, going to a fashion show all dressed up and going to the bar crawl dressed up as a golfer. You know, these are all like goofy and fun moments that I really will treasure forever in my life. And that only happened because I was able to put myself out there to do things that I didn't really feel like doing. Looking back, the moments I remember from law school wasn't some specific case law on how survival necessity was start defense for eating a friend or how stupid it felt studying European Union law after Brexit. But it was other moments with your friends, the moments that you stole a traffic cone after a very drunk night out, the moments when your friend got so drunk he got kicked out of the nightclub. Those are the memories that you actually remember. But no, it did feel quite stupid studying European Union law after Brexit. Like, oh, just going back on track though, this is what I really learned. Don't prioritize happiness, but instead prioritize tasks that will enlarge or grow you. Because if you prioritize happiness, a lot of the nights I would have just stayed in, gone on YouTube, gone on Netflix, watch something. But because I prioritize opportunities that will enlarge and grow me, I knew that I should be going to that event. I should be joining my friends on meeting some new people instead of just staying in because I was prioritizing growth, but not just happiness. Fast forward to 2022. Eventually, I graduated university on a high. I knew the community, I know the people there, I know the culture. I was having the best time of my life, right? I was very confident. And none of this would have happened if I, first of all, did not take the leap of faith to come to the UK. And second of all, if I did not embrace the uncertainty and embrace the uncomfortable feeling of just putting myself out there. And after my graduation, I went back home for the summer and that's when I really realized how much I've changed. I realized that I left home as a 18 year old naive kid and came back as a 21 year old, slightly less naive, but still relatively naive kid. And I cannot wait to jump on another new challenge and see what life have to offer me. And so, after the summer, I moved back to the UK, but this time to London. So far, I've lived here for a few months. There's been ups and downs. I'm trying to find my footing here. I'm trying to grow my network here. It feels uncomfortable, but that's exactly why I know it's the right decision. So here's my challenge to you. What has been on your mind for so long, but you were so afraid of doing it? Try take a leap of faith and embrace the uncomfort because life begins at the edge of your comfort zone. Give us a like and comment down below what you plan to do. And if you enjoy these kind of content, please let me know and please subscribe because this really helps the algorithm. And with that being said, I'll see you around. Bye bye. We'll go